morning everyone. I am very excited that Euro School Thane, we have launched our science exhibition and this virtual uh, in-house science project come exhibition for all our students and the, these projects are going to be judged by Euro School Ironi. Well, this is a very great endeavor and a great initiative that we started last year and we are so happy that our children are participating in it in such an enthusiastic manner. We have got 39 projects which have been made into videos till now and we are very very happy that our students have done such a wonderful job. So I wish to commend all the students who have participated in this project in this exhibition in this entire endeavor i would also like to thank all the teachers of our science department who are doing excellent work in this regard and i wish all our students all the very best as they go forward and we take the name of our science department of our school to even higher levels it's so nice that children from grades six onwards have participated in this and I'm sure as the years go forward, more and more children will very enthusiastically part, take part in all these endeavors. Thank you. Respected Principal Ma'am, Ms. Jyotsna Mayadas, our Honorable Judges, Ms. Ipshita, Mr. Swapnil, and Ms. Femina, the participants, and all our dear viewers, good morning. I, Yuktika Bodeda from Grade 11B, welcome you all to the Virtual Science Exhibition of Euroschool Thane. As rightly said by Sir Jagdeep Chandra Bose, the true laboratory is the mind, where behind illusions we uncover the laws of truth. In the same spirit, the aim of today's science exhibition is to promote innovation and research-mindedness in aspiring young minds. We believe that this exhibition will serve as a launch pad to galvanize your thoughts and ideas into creative science projects and motivate further pursuit of scientific knowledge in you. Wishing the event and the budding scientists here good luck and great success. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Arya Rajiv Ranjan and I am from grade 6H. Today I will be doing a small experiment on volcanic eruption. Let us begin with our experiment. So now first, I will pour my lukewarm water. Since my bottle is small, I will be taking them in small amount. Now I will take some of my dish soap and pour it in. Now the vinegar. Now I will be adding some food dye. For a vibrant effect. Now before pouring pouring in the baking soda slurry, I will mix it up. Now mixing this and now here is our experiment. A simple homemade volcanic eruption. This happens because baking soda acts as a base and takes a proton from vinegar, which is an acid. This reaction releases a gas when the baking soda takes a proton, thus transforming into water and carbon dioxide. Yes, the frothy liquid is nothing but water and carbon dioxide. I am Anabitharya from class 6G, Euro School Thani. For today's science exhibition, I have chosen the topic as simple machines. So, without wasting any time, let's start with the presentation. This is an seesaw, which is also an example of a liver. 
A lever is a type of simple machine which is used to take or carry heavy objects or stuff to an elevated or an higher area or a surface. Its main function is to reduce human effort <clears throat> and do work in minimum time. So, without wasting any time, let's start with the presentation of my next project. This. This is an inclined plane. An inclined plane is a type of simple machines which almost have the same features like the lever. But the lever and the inclined plane are used for very different kinds of jobs. For example, if we take a scissor which is an example of lever, it is used for cutting through paper, cardboard and various things. While if we take an example of this road, it is the place where the car moves up and down and on the bridge. Let me show you a live example like this. This is how an inclined plane is used. This inclined plane can be used for taking stuff or objects up and down. Thank you everyone for watching this video and have a nice day. Bye. The things we need are common salt, hot water, cold water, two glasses and a spoon. What do we want to do? Take two glasses, fill the first one with cold water and the second one with hot water. Add a first one with add the add a spoon of salt in each each of the glasses. Mix them and see which which powder disappears faster salt dissolves faster in hot water the heat the concept behind this is so heat allows molecules to move quickly than cold water helping the salt to dissolve faster thank you everyone my name is ananya somit and i am from class 6g Today, I am going to be doing the rising water experiment which shows the effects of atmospheric pressure. For this experiment, you will need a plate, a candle, a glass and some coloured water. First, we will take a candle and place it on the middle of our plate. Next, we will take our coloured water and fill our plate with it. After this, you want to burn this candle. Next, we will take a glass cup and place it on the candle. And now let's see what happens. As you can see, the water level has risen inside the glass. The burning flame heats up the air inside the glass and the air expands. Once the flame is extinguished due to lack of oxygen, the air inside cools and it contracts. And it creates a low pressure area or a vacuum inside the glass. The pressure outside the glass is the same but the pressure inside is lower. So the pressure outside pushes the water inside the cup and the water level inside the cup rises till the pressure on both inside and outside of the cup are same. This concludes our experiment. Thank you. Hello everybody. My name is Ananya Sameer Mahuli from class 6C. Today we are going to do an experiment on extinguishing this candle. So for that we need to mix, we need to make carbon dioxide by mixing vinegar which is acetic acid with baking soda which is sodium bicarbonate. 
when these two mix together they fizz to form carbon dioxide when it, the glass is tilted the carbon dioxide comes out and surrounds the candle pushing aside the oxygen thus extinguishing the candle let us do it so i'm going to first add my baking soda and then now i'm going to add my vanilla So this is fizzing up. And that is how our candle is extinguished by carbon dioxide. Thank you. In physics, sound is a vibration that propagates as an acoustic wave. through a transmission medium such as a gas liquid or solid hello everyone today i will present to you my experiment which demonstrates how sound waves travel When the ruler hits the spoon it creates vibrations which make sound waves These sound waves travel up the yarn and to the ear instead of just spreading out into the air around you The yarn acts as a conductor which is an object that allows sound waves to travel Depending on the size of the spoon and the length of the yarn the sound will appear higher or deeper and because the yarn allows the sound waves to continue to travel the sound of the spoon will resonate or reverberate meaning they will continue for a while after you have hit the spoon Hello everyone I am Bhavi Ashtankar from 6B and I am participating in the science exhibition so you can see the two lemons a small and a big one connected with some kind of wires so this is a switch and I am going to generate electricity from these two lemons I have a zinc cup a zinc plate and a copper plate in the both the lemons So let's go and light up the wire. I shall put the light off so that you can see the LED light. Now you can see the LED light. This electricity is generated from the lemon. This happens because the lemon contains acid and with the combination of the zinc and the copper the it generates the electricity so we conclude that the lemon contains acid and is good for digestion with that in this way of the generation of electricity we do we do not harm the nature and it results each lemon each lemon generates the 1.5 voltage thank you My name is Sarshan Padma and from Grade Six B. Today I am going to show you my experiment and explain it. For this experiment, I will need a, an injection slider, a 60 ml injection cylinder, and a small balloon. First, I will take my injection cylinder and put the balloon in it like this. Yeah. If you look, it's inside the cylinder. If I if I put if I press slider in it and press it, it should compress. See, but it doesn't. As the pressure easily goes out 
by this hole. It lets allows the air to escape. But if I slightly block the hole and press it, if I see, it compresses. As you can see, it compresses as stated by Sir Robert Boyle in his Boyle's Law of Gases. Thank you. Everyone, I am Soho Moire from Euro School Thane 6B and I am going to show you uh, an experiment traveling water. So for this experiment, we need a glass of water, an empty glass and a thread. So, so now we will take some water and we'll dig this thread inside the water and make this wet nicely make this wet and now I'll keep one end inside this empty glass and now this other hand end inside this glass and now I'll store slowly start pouring the water very slowly see this the water is getting transferred see this see this see this the whole water is now transferred into this glass. The all the water is transferred into this glass. See this. The water is now transferred in this glass. This happened because of a process called cohesion. As this thread was already wet, this already had many water molecules. And as I poured the water from this glass, uh, the water molecules present in the water stuck with the water molecules present in the thread and it followed all the way down in this glass and the water was transferred to this glass. I hope you like this experiment. Thank you. Dory B from grade 6C. E. Now I am going to do one experiment. That experiment name is heat dissolution. The items are one glass of hot water and one glass of cold water and salt. So first we have to add half tablespoon of salt into hot water and half tablespoon of salt into cold water and mix and not mix too much after mixing in hot water the salt will dissolve faster because the molecules in hot water are in faster motion come in and in uh, cold water the molecules are in slow motion compared to hot water and thank you hello everyone i am Vidha Kansi from 6p and i am doing an experiment on air pressure for this experiment i have got a wax glandule and i have lighted it up and i have put it in this plate filled with water now i am going to take this glass and put it on the wax candle hot air contracts a vacuum, it cools it. Good morning teachers. My name is Shita Kathuria and I am from class 6E. Today I am going to do an experiment of invisible ink.
greetings of the day, respected judges and my dear friends. Do you know what happened yesterday? I hurt my arm while riding my bicycle. It was bleeding so much. But then my mom consoled me. She said that the bleeding would stop after a while. Well, that got me wondering, what is this blood? Why is it so red? What makes this blood stop? Will I fall sick if germs enter my body? So come on, let's find out the answers. The things that are required for this experiment are a microscope, cover slides, a beaker, dropper, leishman stain, lancet, a glass bowl, cotton and clinical spirit. We will first start this experiment by taking two glass slides. Disinfect these glass slides with 90% alcohol. Now sterilize the finger and pick with sterile lancet. Place a tiny drop of blood at the center of the corner of a slide. Take another glass slide, incline it to 45 degrees angle and keep it on the tiny drop of blood. Now gently and briskly take the slide to the other end. Air dry the slide for one minute. Our slide is now air dry. A perfect blood smear is roughly tongue shaped. Now we will wash this slide in Leishman stain. Add several drops of Leishman stain. Add twice the amount of distilled water. Leave the slide for 10 minutes. Now we are going to leave this to air dry. A perfectly made blood smear is rose pink in color. Awesome! Now let's observe our blood smear under the microscope. Do you know how blood looks under the microscope? Let's check it out. Position the glass slide under the microscope. This is how blood cells look under the microscope. What is blood? Blood is a body fluid in humans and other animals that delivers necessary substances such as nutrients and oxygen to the cells and transports metabolic waste products away from those same cells. In vertebrates, it is composed of blood cells such as RBCs, erythrocytes, WBCs, leukocytes, platelets, thrombocytes and plasma. Why is blood red in color? RBCs that are red blood cells contain hemoglobin, a protein that carries oxygen. Blood gets its bright red color when hemoglobin picks up oxygen in the lungs. As the blood travels through the body, the hemoglobin releases oxygen to the different body parts. Do we fall sick when germs enter our body? Sometimes, but most of the times are WBCs or white blood cells, which are a part of the immune system, fight for infection. These cells circulate through the bloodstream and tissues to respond to injury or illness by attacking any unknown organisms that enter your body. Why does blood stop beating? When we get a cut, the blood cells and plasma ooze into the surrounding tissue. The platelets immediately stick to the edges of the cut. Platelets are small colorless cell fragments in our blood that form clots and stop prevent bleeding. Thank you. Myself Shriya Lovalekar from grade 6C. Today I am going to show you the experiment for electromagnetic field. Here I took a nail which is coiled in copper wire. We had to leave the ends open. This is iron feeling. 
Now we have to connect to the ends of the copper wire to the battery. When current will get passed through wire, magnetic field will get generated on nail. This can be checked as nail attracts iron feeling. This is a very important principle. It is used in motors, generators, doorbells and mixers. This principle is used in generators to generate electricity which keeps us moving. Hope you like my experiment. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Siddhi Kulkarni and I am from grade 6E Euro School Thane. Today in this science exhibition, I am going to be demonstrating working of model of wind turbine made from cardboard. This model has blade attached to it, generator, cables and bulb inside the house. Now let's see how this model works. When blades of wind turbine are rotated like this, electricity is generated and transmitted through cable to bulb installed in house. Now you can see how the bulb is glowing by the electricity generated by wind turbine. Thank you everybody. Hello everyone. I, my name is Ellen Bentry and I am in 6F. Today I am going to be demonstrating an experiment on air pressure with an egg and a bottle. Here I have two things. A bottle with a wide opening and a hard boiled egg. Now we are going to, now as you can see, the egg cannot clearly fit inside the bottle. How do we do that? So we will need to reduce the air pressure inside the bottle to make sure that the egg goes inside the bottle. Now um, to do this, you will need to take a piece of paper, burn it and carefully place it inside the bot bottle. Then place the egg on top of the bottle. Um, then you will clearly see that the egg is vibrating and hot air is coming out of it. And then you will carefully see that the egg is being pushed inside the bottle. Now once it's inside, the process is done. But now, how will we get the egg outside, out of the bottle again? Now we have an option to reverse the process. We, for this, we must increase the air pressure inside the bottle so that the egg will come out. We can do this by blowing air hard inside the bottle and the egg will slowly come out. Let's do it, but under parent supervision. Okay. Now, as you can see, the egg is carefully being pulled inside. So, it blew out. Yes, it is coming in. Going in, going in, go, going in. Good morning everyone. Today I am going to perform an experiment about density. First, I will add some water into this container. And then I will put this lemon inside this. You can see that this lemon has sink. Now I will add some sugary water into this container. You 
can now see that this lemon has started to float. This is because the sugary water is more dense than the pure water. So, because of its density, the lemon has started to float. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tanish Tambe and today we will be performing a science experiment about pH value. pH value means potential of hydrogen concentration of a substance. To perform this experiment, we have red cabbage water as an agent. The reason we are using red cabbage water because it contains a water soluble pigment called anthocyanin that changes color when it's mixed with an acid or an alkali. Now let's get to the experiment. I have this pH scale which shows the different levels of pH including acidic, neutral and alkali. They have different colors. Now to make the red cabbage water we first have to boil some water and then pour it on the red cabbage leaves and let it settle for some time. So the water will turn violet in color like this. Now we will pour some of this red cabbage water into each of the four glasses. For our substances, we have baking soda, baking powder, lemon, soapy water and normal water. So first I will be adding 2 pinches of the baking soda into the red cabbage water. As you can see the water has turned blue in color and on the pH scale blue is on level 9, 10 or 11 which indicates alkali kind of. Now a few drops of lemon. The water has turned red in color, little red, which on this scale indicates very acidic. Now I will be pouring some soapy water. The red cabbage water has turned green in color. Now for normal water, it has no changes because normal water is considered neutral. So in conclusion, this explains how we can test, observe and measure the amount of pH in different substances. Thank you. From class 7b. Today, I am going to present a few experiments based on the topic air pressure. For this experiment, we are going to need one narrow mouthed bottle and a balloon. The balloon is placed at the mouth of this bottle. Now, I am going to inflate the balloon. The balloon does not deflate even if I remove my hand. It deflates at my orders. Let me show you how. Go! Stop. Go. Stop. Go. How does this happen? The air inside the bottle does not allow the balloon to deflate, but I have made a small hole at the bottom of this at the bottom of this bottle. 
the air outside enters through this hole and pushes the air in the balloon outside. In this experiment, we see that the higher the wind speed is, the lower the pressure it has. When we blow between the two balloons, the balloons come closer to each other as the air pressure between them has reduced and the air beside the two balloons pushes the balloons to come together while we expect them to blow up to move apart. For this experiment I have taken a bottle with a narrow mouth and a piece of paper that I have turned into a ball. I will try to blow this ball to the end of the bottle horizontally. Let's try again. Why does this happen? The higher the speed of the wind, the lower the pressure it will have. The air I blow has lesser pressure than the air inside this bottle. It pushes the ball outside the bottle when I blow air in the bottle. Hope you enjoyed the experiments. Thank you. Bye. Hello everyone, this is Chia and today I will explain the structure of a nephron. So the nephron has four main parts, the Bowman's capsule, the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle and the distal convoluted tubule. So the uh, Bowman's capsule is a cup shaped structure, has a cup shaped structure and it has a bundle of uh, blood vessels which is known as the glomerulus. So the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule together are known as the malthusian body. The blood enters through the uh, afferent arteriole and exits through the efferent arteriole. Uh, these two are known as convoluted tubules because they are highly twisted. This region uh, of this part of the nephron lies in the cortex region and this part lies in the medulla region. The main filtration of blood happens in the uh, glomerulus or the Bowman's capsule. So, uh, the afferent arteriole is wider than the efferent arteriole due to which there is a high pressure created. The, this leads to the entrance of mole, small molecules, uh, liquid part of the blood and some waste products. Now this liquid is known as the glomerular filtrate. The glomerular filtrate still has many important uh, molecules which need to be reabsorbed. So they are reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule. Uh, Glucose and water molecules are reabsorbed. In the loop of Henle, uh, salts such as potassium and sodium are absorbed. And in a distilluted convoluted tubule, apart from the reabsorption process, drugs and medicines that, uh, in the surrounding blood are also absorbed. So, after absorption of uh, medicines and bloods, they are added uh, to medicines and drugs, they are added to the glomerular filtrate and then they are known as the urine. This urine passes through the collecting duct, after passing from the, through the collecting, collecting duct, duct it uh, moves to the pelvis, from the pelvis traveling through the ureters, it moves to the urinary bladder. Thank you. Hello, I am Arish Kumar from class 7D and today I am going to demonstrate the use and principle of a water pump by using a simple exhibit. Here, I have taken two empty bottles and connected them to a pipe. I have made some holes in the pipe. I have connected a motor to a bottle using a pipe. I have kept this set in a tree containing colored water. Now, when I turn on the switch, what we see is that the water is rushing in the bottle uh, connected to the motor. And now, it, will, it comes as a nice, wonderful waterfall. So, why does this happen? This is because when we turn on the motor, it creates a vacuum inside the bottle. Um, whereas on the tree, atmospheric pressure is acting, which pushes the water inside the bottle to create equilibrium. This is how the way a water pump works. Thank you. My name is Navya Jaitwa and I am from grade 7F. I have made a water dispenser and let me show you how does it work. I have an empty glass here and the bottle is filled with water. 
when i open the cap of the bottle the water comes out and when i close the water does not come it is because of the air pressure thank you everyone i am sankal paiya from grade 7 f euro school thane and i will perform a performing a experiment for the science exhibition in this experiment we will see how baking soda and vinegar react with each other to form carbon dioxide for so for the starting of the wheel need some we will need some uh, materials materials required are a glove a, gl a glass some baking soda and a vinegar bottle so for the first step of the experiment we'll have to put some baking soda inside this glove so here i've got my baking soda inside my glove and now i'll i have to pour some vinegar inside this inside my steel inside my glass cup and now when i when i am going to put this glove on this cup and when the baking soda falls into the vinegar inside the glass it will trigger a chemical reaction which uh, resulting in the formation of carbon dioxide in this reaction carbon dioxide is the product and vinegar and baking soda are the reactants so let's get started so now i have my cup uh, i have my glove put in, uh, on the cup and now i'm going to release the baking soda and now the baking soda is released and the carbon dioxide is started to form the carbon dioxide has formed which is started to accumulate inside the glove the reason if i have this glove over here is if i do not have the glove the carbon dioxide will escape and we won't be able to see the reaction properly so in this reaction it is proved that baking soda and vinegar react with each other to form carbon dioxide hope you like my experiment thank you hello everyone my name is sri and i am a student from class 7 zero school thane today i am going to perform an optical illusion in this science exhibition so this is a normal window and it is called the ames window so it looks very normal But now I start repeating it like this. Did you notice something? Yes. This window looks as if it's taking claps and rotating only one eighty degrees. but actually let me tell you that this is moving completely 360 degrees how does this happen well this is a phenomenon in which when we look at something our brain interprets it to be closer to us if it's longer that is an object which is bigger appears to be closer to us hence when i move this like this this object is bigger hence it appears to be closer and it is true in this case but when the smaller side of this window comes in front it still is smaller or shorter than this side because this is not a rectangle this is a trapezoid and when we look at it our brain thinks that the longer side is still closer to us why is it this so because it's bigger than this side hence when i rotate it at a high speed like this to our brain seems like it's taking 180 degree turns actually it's rotating fully everyone i am harshad gowda from grade 7 e euro school thane on account of science exhibition today i would be performing a very interesting experiment on density named as lava lamp i hope you all are excited for it So should we start it? So let's move on to our lab. The items we need today. 
vinegar, food color, bowl, baking soda, 100 ml container and oil. So let's start playing with the density. So first we'll take a bowl. We'll pour the vinegar in it. Then we'll take the baking soda and add 1 by 4th teaspoon of it. Then it would start reacting with the vinegar and we'll pour some food color to differentiate it with the oil. Then we'll mix it properly to form a homogeneous mixture and then we'll pour it in the glass. Then we'll pour some oil into the liquid. I'll add a bit more. And now we'll mix it. I know you all are excited to know the reason behind it. It's simple. The heavier liquid, which is the water, absorbs the heat and expands. As it expands, it becomes less denser than the oil and rises up. As it rises up, it again cools down and becomes denser and comes down, forming a wave-like structure. Isn't that interesting? See you next time! Hello everybody, I am Riti Pandey and today welcome to our science exhibitions. So today I will be doing a very interesting experiment. So we are going to see how conduction of heat works. So the ingredients, the ingredients for making this experiment which are the stuff that we need are some iron nails, wax, a rod and a burner. That's all we need and they all might be available at your home. So you can use any possible rod. All the nails are there in some place and you can also buy them. And instead of a burner, you can use your own gas that you have. Your burner over here. So I'll be using that and let's enjoy. The first step is to melt the wax. So I have taken a, uh, a small container and I've coated it with my foil that, I've, uh, that I also had at home. So that it increases the speed of the melting of the wax. And that's an easy way to melt wax faster. So I melted wax and uh, uh, it's the, here you can see the video coming right up of me melting the wax. Step 2 is that we have to stick all the iron nails to the iron rod that we have. And then we have to stick the iron rod to a height, to a maximum height so that it can reach the burner. That the flames of the burner do not touch the rod but still they heat it. So guys, this is what we have done. All of this has stuck properly as you can see. And um, now it's not even falling because the wax has dried properly. This is what we need. This is the exact thing. Now this will be our burning point. That's why it's a bit like this. We're going to keep it somewhere like this on our burner. And we make sure it is safe. So we're going to use the one end so that it burns properly. And then we're going to continue with our process. So guys, we are done with setting our, this is our setup, this is how we are going to do it. We have all the iron nails attached and this is our rod and all of this are, are present at your house. And that's what we are doing so that it can uh, make easy for learning. Now we are going to turn on our burner so that it starts burning from here and then it will go till here and our process will begin. <laughs>
Okay. So guys, as we saw, our our nails they all melted. The wax in the nails it all melt melted, and they all went on the ground. So they all fell on the platform that we had, and here are the results. So uh, what happened was the ma the wax that was put up over here it started melting and dripping all over the nail, which caused it to fall because there was nothing left or uh, up or to stick the nails. So all of them fell down, which proves that conduction of heat is possible in any situation, and heat transfers from one end to another through the process of conduction. Thank you, and I am Riti Pandey signing off. I am Chaitanya Atul Chopde from Yunusul Thane, Grade 7. Today, I am going to present an experiment on density. The ingredients needed for doing the experiment are 2 equal fill glasses of water, 2 equal size lemon and some salt. The first part of the experiment is to take the first glass and put the lemon in it. And now as you can see, the lemon has sank at the bottom of the glass. The next part of the experiment is to take the second glass and put 2 tablespoons of salt. And mix it well. And put the lemon in the glass. Voila! Now you can see that the lemon has is floating on the top of the glass. This happens due to the density of the salt water is higher than the density of the lemon. So the lemon floats while the density of the normal water is lower than the lemon. So the lemon sinks at the water. Thank you. Friends, I am Shreya Sanjivalya of Grade 7 in the school time. Today, let's have some fun with science. As you can see, I have taken three bowls of different materials. Silver, steel and pilasma. Now, I am going to place some ice cubes on them. These ice cubes are of the same size and as the bowls have been in this room for long, they also are of the same temperature. What do you think will happen to these ice cubes? Well, you are right. These ice cubes have been melt. But all the ice cubes are melting at different rates. Why is this happening? Well, the answer is simple. The silver bowl is a better conductor of heat than the steel and plastic bowls. Hence, the ice cube on the silver bowl is melting faster than the ones on the silver and plastic bowls. Silver bowl is a better conductor, which means that it can absorb and give away heat faster than steel and plastic. We can see this phenomenon in our daily lives. It is easier to hold a cup of hot milk in a plastic or ceramic jar rather than a steel jar. And have you ever imagined what would happen if the person at the ice cream parlor would give you an ice cream in a silver cup? Well, you would turn out drinking ice cream, drinking milkshake rather than eating ice cream. Thank you. And my dear friends, I'm Alana from 7C and my house is Apollo. Today I'll be showing different types of mixtures in my science experiment like liquid liquid, gas gas, solid liquid and a few more. So first I'll be starting with liquid liquid. Now I have taken oil and water and if you can see clearly that there is a small layer formed by the oil on, on top of the water. This indicates that it is a liquid liquid heterogeneous mixture as the components are not uniformly mixed. Next, we'll be going to solid liquid. For this, I have taken water again. And this time, I'm going to be adding sugar to it. As you see, the sugar has dissolved over there. And if I stir it, you can see as the particles are settling down, so this indicates it is a solid liquid 
mixture and it's homogeneous as soon the particles will get dissolved. Next I'll be going for liquid gas. For this I have taken an aerated drink. Now if you can see closely there are some bubbles forming in the drink and this indicates that there is gas present. So this is a liquid gas mixture. Next we'll be going for a solid solid mixture. For this I have taken a few crumbs and some sugar. And I'm going to mix it up a little. And if you can see the particles are slightly mixed together. But still it is a heterogeneous mixture and it's a solid solid as there are two, part, uh, there are two uh, components getting mixed. And lastly, the last two, I'm going to go for solid gas. And for solid gas, we can take an example of smoke as there are tiny solid particles present in present in the uh, smoke such as pollutants, dust, etc. And finally for gas gas, we can take our example as air because in air there are different components of gas like nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, etc. Thank you all so much and yeah, thank you all so much. Hope you enjoyed this science experiment of mine. Thank you. My name is Paris and I'm from class 8. How many of you watch the business news? How many of you read the newspapers? So, what do we get to know? Problems like electricity and coal shortage, petrol and diesel price hike, and pollution. Can there be a one solution to all these problems? Yes, there can be a one single solution to all these problems. And that solution is solar city where every roof is covered with a solar panel. These solar panels are made up of solar cells, also known as the photovoltaic cells. When the solar panels absorb the sunlight, they convert the solar energy into electricity. But the electricity generated is in the form of direct current, which is converted to alternative current by the inverter. This electricity is then distributed for domestic and commercial use like house lights, street lights, hospital and electric vehicle charging station. This can solve all the problems we have discussed in the beginning. So go solar, go green and save the earth. Thank you. Everyone, my name is Navya Agrawal of Credit F and I'll be demonstrating a project on the drip irrigation system. The drip irrigation system is a technique in which water flows through a large container, which is usually a tank, into specialized drip tubes with emitters located at different spaces. Water is distributed by these emitters directly into the soil near the roots. Now, this type of irrigation is also called trickle irrigation and is a much more efficient way than flooding or overhead sprinklers. Uh, there are two types of irrigation mainly. There is commercial and there is small scale or self-made. What I have demonstrated here is the simple design of the drip irrigation system. So you can see a well here which is a water source and there's a motor beneath it which rotates and pumps the water into the tank. Now the flow of electricity or the rotation of the motor is regulated by the switch. And the tank is used to store the water and is usually mounted on a stand. Now the water flows from the tank into the drip tube and at the beginning of the drip tube you can see a valve. So a valve is like a screw and if this is a cross section and this is your screw and then the full or closely in the full closed section you can see like this there's no space for water to pass through but when you open it or unscrew it it looks something like this so there's space for water to pass through now there are nozzles here and here which function somewhat like the valve so from where water drops drop by drop now in the end you can see an end cap which maintains the pressure inside the drip tube and prevents any excess water from overflowing now for the working Now in this case, I, uh, the water seeps underground and there's an extension back to the source, which is the well. Uh, this method helps in water conservation and, uh, min and results in minimized wastage of fertilizer. Thank you very much. Hey everyone, I'm Abhiruchi Mahanta from grade 8C 
And today, I'm going to demonstrate an experiment explaining the dispersion of light, white light, in a prism. So here, you can see an optical triangular prism. It has five faces, two of which are triangular, and the rest three are rectangular faces. It splits white light into its seven different corresponding colors. Here you can see in the diagram that the white light enters the prism and when it escapes out again, you can see that the white light escapes out as its rainbow colors. So this happens because white light, when white light enters the prism, it bends or refracts because of the different angles and planes of the prism. So uh, we all know that white light consists of many different wavelengths. Now each wavelength is refracted by a slightly different amount. So, when the white light comes out of the prism, we can see the different colors of a rainbow. Now, let's do an experiment to prove the same. Now, as you can see, I have switched off the light so that we can clearly see the result of the experiment. Here is the prism and here is the torch. Now, as you can see, the light is falling directly on the prism. So, if you can see this way, you can see a rainbow on the screen which demonstrates my ex, uh, which demonstrates that the white light is split in the prism and then when it is displayed on the screen you can see a rainbow this proves my explanation and experiment thank you greetings to all my name is janet dinesh vaswani from grade 9b euro school my project will throw some light on the topic Induced Pluripotent Stem Cell Technology. I know this sounds exhausting and in my work the process is also exhausting but the concept is revolutionary. If I have to explain this to a layman, I would simply state that I can cure your disease from your own cells. But with a room full of scientific minds, I would like to here present my extended version of Induced Pluripotent Stem Cell Technology. Pluripotency is the term given to cells that can give rise to any type of cell in the body. Like a pluripotent cell can turn into a heart cell or a liver cell or a neuron as well depending on its environmental factors. Stem cell is the term given to cells from which stem out or origin out many other types of cells. Now that we have determined the meanings of PSP, let us talk about the eye. Induced pluripotent stem cell technology involves taking skin cells from a patient and converting them into a different type of cell. First, the skin cells are isolated and allowed to grow in a nutrition rich medium. Then the DNA factors are added. Now the question arises, what are DNA factors? The most, this is the most important and crucial step. Over time, scientists have been able to identify and determine fragments or pieces of important DNA that control the formation of the cell. The DNA factors have been successfully removed from healthy cell and used for reprogramming the nucleus of other cell. Basically, these DNA factors give us control deciding which type of cell to make. This is called induction and reprogramming. Once the DNA is added, it goes and merges with the original DNA of the cell and takes control of the nucleus machinery. As we can see, the DNA has merged here. From here, the cells are placed in a special nutrition medium which helps them to grow into a heart cell or a neuron. The cottony mass of the cell is the stage where they are need to be given the medium of differentiation. Finally, the desired cell is created. From here, the cell can be injected into the patient's body without, without, without the worry of rejection. The patients to treat Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease and many other diseases uh, from which the cells are damaged. This is the revolutionary induced pluripotent stem cell technology. I hope you don't think it's just a concept because it is in fact being used for patients as I speak. All thanks to Dr. Shinya Yamanaka who invented this in 2012 and he has also won a Nobel Prize in Medicine for this technology. It is 2021 everyone. We are truly in the next step of technology. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Aryan Deshpande from grade 9C. Today I'll be showing a self sucking pipe. The materials required are some styrofoam balls which I have scattered over here. You also need a pipe. I've used an ordinary vacuum cleaner pipe, but you can use any pipe that you want.
Oh wow, the balls are coming out from the right end. This happened because of something called the Bernoulli's Principle, which was put forth by Daniel Bernoulli. The Bernoulli's Principle states that as the fluid velocity increases, the pressure decreases. When I move the right end of the pipe, the fluid velocity of the air inside it increased and hence the pressure decreased, causing a low pressure area. The air, air entered from the left end of the pipe and filled the low pressure area. As we all know, that air always moves from high pressure areas to low pressure areas. The air that entered from the left end of the pipe carried the balls with it. So hence it looked like the balls were being sucked into the pipe. Hence this is how a self-sucking pipe works. Thank you. My name is Kuala Bhushle from 9th uh, I have made uh, a hydraulic arm which works in principle of hydraulics. So the principle of each hydraulic machine is that a smaller force acted on a smaller piston is transmitted as a larger force acted on a larger piston. So as we exert pressure over here, it uh, is transmitted to the other side to uh, which result in a movement in that part. Thank you. Hello everyone, greetings. I'm Chaitanya Nadda from grade level B of Euroschool Thane. What I was demonstrating was the law of conservation of angular momentum. This law states that angular momentum remains constant as long as we don't apply an external torque. Angular momentum is the product of rotational inertia and angular velocity. When I was moving my hands in and out, I was changing the rotational inertia of my body. When my hand was out, a fair amount of uh, mass was distributed far away from my axis of rotation. This caused my rotational inertia to be more. When my hand was in, my rotational inertia was less. As I said earlier, angular momentum is the product of rotational inertia and the angular velocity. And angular momentum is constant unless an external force is applied. So, at the beginning of demonstration, my hands are in. That means the rotational inertia is less, so the angular velocity is relatively more. Then, when I pull my hands out, the rotational inertia increases, and so the angular velocity decreases in order to keep the product constant, in order to keep the angular momentum constant, so as to satisfy the law of conservation of angular momentum. Let's see the demonstration with more mass in my hands, so that the fluctuation between the angular velocity and the rotational inertia will be more clearly visible. In this demonstration, the angular momentum is reducing over time. It stops after some time. This is because an external force is there, an external torque is there, and that is the force of friction. This law is used at good advantages by the ice skaters. They start spinning at a very slow speed and then they pack their arms and legs so tightly and uh, close to each other that they start spinning at a very fast rate due to law of conservation of angular momentum. I hope everyone has understood the law of conservation of angular momentum. Well, why did it stop? Every student knows or at least thinks that he or she knows that it was stopped by a force called friction. Well, friction also happens to be the topic which I, Arif Jain from class 11b of Euroschool Thane intend to discuss in this video. Let's start by defining friction. What is friction? Friction is the force that opposes motion when a body moves or even tries to move on another body. Well, 
all of you must have noticed that friction tends to increase with roughness but that's only true to a certain limit beyond which if you increase the smoothness of the body the friction actually increases to such a great extent that two uh, bodies in contact can practically weld together and this process in which they do so is known as cold welding let's take a look at this diagram there are two bodies let this be the car that i rolled earlier and let this be the table as you can see both the bodies have many purple dots these dots represent molecules each molecule attracts each other with an adhesive force this adhesive force is responsible for friction now in this case let this be case 1 both the car and the table have a rough surface this means that they have various projections these projections can help to increase the friction by interlocking with each other but they also limit the area of contact between two points which means less adhesive force let's take a look at case 2 in this case both the car and the table have an infinitely smooth surface since there are no projections in the surface there is no scope of interlocking but the surface area of contact is maximum which implies that the adhesive forces are maximum and hence the amount of friction is greater in this case than it was in the previous case even though the in this case the body is smoother my warmest greetings to you all and heartiest congratulations to all the winners of the virtual science exhibition science is all about curiosity experimenting and exploring It is my privilege to propose the vote of thanks and acknowledge the contribution of all those who have worked really hard to make this virtual science exhibition happen. I, Sahasi Pawar, on behalf of Euroschool Thane and the entire fraternity of the institution, first of all extend my most sincere thanks to our respected principal, Ms. Jyotsna Maya Das, for being the catalyst who stimulated us to do our best and stood as a pillar of strength. Ma'am, it's because of your encouragement and support. we were able to make this event a resounding success a special mention to ms geeta agarwal principal euroschool aeroli who spared time from her busy schedule to support this venture i wish to express my gratitude to the judges ms ipshita mr sopnil and ms femina for your time and effort in judging the event we look forward for your association in our future events as well i am thankful to our coordinator for grades 9 to 11 Ms Vasanta Rajpurohit and our coordinator for grade 6 to 10 Ms Olivia Port for her constant support and guidance an event like this cannot happen overnight we'll start rolling weeks ago it requires thorough planning and a bird's eye for details i want to express my heartfelt gratitude to ms bharti randive senior head of department of physics ms shashikala pujara senior head of department of chemistry and the senior head of department of biology ms gargi banerjee also i am grateful to the entire team of proactive science teachers for their relentless effort to bring out the future scientists to the limelight i would like to take this opportunity to place on record our hearty thanks to mr rahul nikam it support head euroschool thane for the perfect logistics support and the guidance he has extended to all of us Our sincere gratitude goes to all parents and well wishers for your rock solid support system and encouragement. Without your support, we would not have been able to achieve excellence. Thank you so much for your valuable contribution. I would like to thank our budding scientists who have elevated the standards of this event. Your days of hard work were evident in your demonstration and experiments. All the activities were captivating and creative as well. Last but not the least, I thank my fellow colleagues the senate members for rendering your support whenever needed. I thank you my friends from the bottom of my heart. I wish and pray to the almighty to shower his blessings on all of you who are watching our show. Stay safe. Hope to meet you all soon. Till then happy sciencing.